Global warming could unleash viruses and permafrost. Scientists warn that climate change is melting permafrost soils, which may lead to the release of ancient viruses and bacterium. Permafrost is permanently frozen soil. It is a good preserver for microbes and viruses because of low temperatures and the lack of oxygen. As temperatures in the Arctic Circle rise, the permafrost melts, which may lead to the release of trapped viruses. Layers of permafrost could also be exposed by mining and drilling operations. Meanwhile, bacteria that can form spores are able to survive longer compared to bacteria that do not form spores. In August 2016, more than 20 people were reportedly infected by the anthrax virus that was released by thawed permafrost in the Yamal Peninsula in the Arctic Circle. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Keep watching for more on how climate change affects our lives. Rising temperatures could be linked to an increase in diabetes cases. A recent study shows that an increase in cases of type 2 diabetes may be linked to global warming, including 100,000 new annual cases in the U.S. alone. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about one out of every three Americans will develop type 2 diabetes. A study published in the journal BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care found that as the average annual temperature rose by 1 degree Celsius, the number of diabetes cases rose by 3.1 per 10,000 people. Researchers suspect the rise could be due to the inactivity of brown adipose tissue, a natural body fat that produces heat from burning the fat stored in organs to keep the body warm when temperatures drop. If temperatures stay warm, the inactivity of brown adipose tissue can increase fat stored in organs, causing glucose intolerance and diabetes. According to the World Health Organization, about 422 million people worldwide suffer from either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Most cities will be too hot to host the Summer Olympics by 2085. A newly published study states that most cities in the world will be too hot to host the Summer Olympics in the near future. This includes Tokyo, which will host the Games in 2020. The wet bulb globe temperature uses a device to measure the effect of ambient temperature, relative humidity, wind speed, and solar radiation on humans. When this temperature exceeds 77 degrees Fahrenheit, athletes competing outdoors may begin to experience heat stress. The reason is that high humidity in the air reduces the rate of sweat evaporation, the body's natural cooling system. Scientists predict that the bid cities for the 2020 Olympics, Istanbul and Madrid, as well as Tokyo, would all be too hot to host the event in the future. Contenders for the 2024 Games, Rome, Paris, Budapest and Los Angeles, could also become unfit to host the Games just six plus decades later. By 2085, only a few cities would have suitable climates. They include Edinburgh, Glasgow, Dublin, Belfast, Calgary, Vancouver, and San Francisco. With only a few cities left to choose from, perhaps the Summer Olympics should be postponed. Just a thought. Middle East and North Africa soon to become uninhabitable. A group of researchers believes temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will rise dramatically over the course of the 21st century. The research suggests even if Earth's average temperature increases by 2 degrees Celsius, summer temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will increase more than twice that. The temperature could rise to 46 degrees Celsius during daytime by mid-century, and it could be as high as 50 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. Also, heat waves could occur 10 times more often than now. The hottest period lasted for about 16 days on average between 1986 and 2005. However, these areas will experience 80 days of extreme heat per year by mid-century, and up to 118 days by the end of the century. The increasing air pollution caused by desert dust storms could make the environmental conditions intolerable, forcing people to migrate. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Thought climate change predictions were scary. Well, they just got a whole lot scarier. The possible effects of climate change are far worse and could come far sooner than we previously thought. So says James Hansen, a leading climate change researcher who was among the first to warn the public about the serious effects of the buildup of carbon dioxide. The former director of NASA's Institute for Space Studies, along with 18 other leading climate scientists, 
published a paper this week predicting rapid sea level rises could happen within decades. A team of researchers primary claim that as the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica melt, a layer of cold fresh water will build up over the ocean, trapping warmer, salty ocean water, with which it doesn't easily mix, underneath the surface, and thereby leading to a feedback loop that causes ice shelves to melt even more rapidly, effectively slowing down and possibly shutting down ocean circulation, an idea apparently not too dissimilar from the premise of the 2004 disaster movie The Day After Tomorrow. The scientists believe that this ice melting will cool polar regions of the globe and warm areas around the equator, causing stark temperature variances that could make superstorms, such as Hurricane Sandy, which struck the U.S. East Coast with devastating effect in 2012, far more frequent. To argue their case, the researchers controversially claim that storms during the warm Eemian period 120,000 years ago were powerful enough to lift massive boulders 1,000 tons in size, from the bottom of the ocean and hurl them ashore. Hansen and his team believe a multimeter sea level rise could occur before the end of the century and envelop all of the planet's coastal cities. Despite the dire predictions, Hansen, in an accompanying video, explained that there may possibly still be an opportunity to reverse this worrying trend, saying, quote, I doubt that we have passed the point of no return, but frankly, we're not certain of that. 